Good evening. Welcome to Healing for Today. This is Apostle Clint Potter's Freedom Ministry Christian Center, Gainesville, Georgia. New program. We call it Healing for Today. I know many of you are very excited about what God is doing in 2016. We're about to go into the second month of a new year. We're thanking God for all the wonderful testimonies of the healing power of God. This year, God got some exciting things that we're doing at Clint Potter's Ministry. So we want to encourage you to continue to log on to find out the exciting things what God is doing. We do have a website before we get into our message today. Uh, that website is www.clintonpotters.org. Once again, that's www.clintonpotters.org. Love for you to go on our website, check out some important things that we're doing here uh, in Clint Potter's ministry. Also, at the same time, if you do want to send us an email, love for you to actually go ahead and send us an email. That's clintonpottersministry at gmail.com. Once again, that's clintonpottersministry at gmail.com. The announcer would put the information up there shortly so that you will be able to go ahead and look at that information. So right now, clintonpottersministry at gmail.com and also www.clintonpotters.org. Exciting thing what God is doing in 2016. We want you to be a part of it. It's a wonderful thing to know that God loves us so much. Today we're about to get into the healing broadcast. I just want all of you to know that we love you so much. Thank you so much for your prayers, your testimonies, so forth, what God is doing in your body. I believe with all in my heart we are embarking upon the greatest revival that the church is about to see. And guess what? You're going to be a part of that this year. Why? Because healing is the children's bread today, and we thank God for that today. So at this particular time, let's go ahead and dive right into the Word of God, because I believe that God wants to bring some things out for you today. That's why I believe it's not by coincidence or even accident that you're watching this broadcast in your particular area. Why? Because Jesus has you on his mind. Isn't it a wonderful thing to know that you're on the mind of Jesus today, particularly concerning your physical body? Many of you have been crying and praying, that, Lord, I need help. I need assistance. That's why I believe this Healing for Today broadcast is specifically designed for you and mine. Why? Because we know that healing is for today. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, thank you for those that are viewing us by broadcast today. We pray in Jesus' name for the anointing of the Holy Ghost to be upon all of us. Thank you for word, wisdom, understanding that calls us to walk in what you have for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I tell you what we want to talk about today on this particular broadcast. I want to talk about some of the hindrances to divine healing. What do you mean some of the hindrances? Well, we found out in previous broadcasts, it is God's will for us to be healed. We talked about in Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, that says, Surely he bore our sickness and he carried our disease, and by his stripes we are healed. We talked about in Matthew 8, 17, that he himself took our sickness and our disease. We talked about in 1 Peter 2, 24, that he bore our sins and sicknesses on the cross, and by his stripes we were healed. So we found out that there are three foundational scriptures that we use as it relates to healing for today. 1 Peter 2, 24, Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, and Matthew 8, 17 as a foundational backdrop as we will use today in order to talk about healing. But one of the things I want you to think about is this. Some people have healing issues is because their mentality is not straight. It's not that God doesn't want them to be healed. But one thing I always tell people, unless you can get your theology straight, sometimes it can hinder you from believing God. See, you cannot believe what you don't understand. You cannot believe what you don't even know. The Bible says in Hosea 4, chapter, verse 6, that my people perish because of the lack of knowledge. So many times in the body of Christ, people are perishing because they have the lack of information. It's not that Jesus doesn't want them to be healed. It's not that they're not want to walk in divine help. It's because they don't have the information that they need. So our desire and our assignment today in this broadcast is to eradicate any type of information that is designed to stop you from walking in divine healing. So we're going to talk about the hindrances to divine healing today. There are several ones that, that we can talk about, but only in this short period of time. 
we're going to talk about the first one. I think it's most important, the reason why people don't walk in divine healing. Number one, the one is this, people believe that God is not a healer. They believe that God doesn't heal people. And sell it too much, uh, it's, it's, it's a theology information that has gone in the body of Christ. It's birthed out of secular humanistic teaching that healing doesn't come from God, uh, 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 that, that, that God doesn't heal you at all. That is not the will of God. And so we must understand this, that we talked about that Jesus died on the cross that you and I may be healed. Isaiah 53 that we're going to go back to because this is the first thing of healing where people don't think divine healing is for us. But let's talk about the Scripture and see what the Scripture says. We quoted the Scriptures to you earlier, but we're going to go back to Isaiah 53, and we're going to talk about divine healing, the hindrances to healing. Some people don't think that God wants you healed. Well, Isaiah 53 said it like this, surely he bore our sicknesses, our disease, and our weaknesses. And he carried our sorrows. We esteem him stricken and smitten by God. For he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. Chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we were healed. So the first hindrance to uh, healing is this. People don't believe that God is a healer. Well, the Bible said God is a healer. Well, according to Isaiah 53, the Bible talks about that Jesus bore your sicknesses. He bore your disease. He bore your weaknesses. So if Jesus is not a healer, why would he bear your sickness? Why would he bear your disease if he was not a healer? That type of teaching comes from a secular humanistic teaching that is designed to stop the body of Christ from walking in divine healing. And so with that in mind, the Bible says in Romans 12, verse 2, it says, no longer be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may know what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So in other words, the Bible says, no longer conform yourself to the world teaching. No longer conform yourself to the world the way the, way the world think about things but be ye transformed by the renewing. Notice the word renewing, renewing consistent, renewing of your mind. Why? That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So the Bible says here, Jesus bore my sickness, he bore my disease. And then he said, and he carried my sorrows. When you look at the literal translation in the Bible, as it talks about divine healing, the word sorrows talks about my pain. So Jesus took my sicknesses, he took my disease, he took my weaknesses, and he took my pain. So if healing was not for today, why would Jesus do that? But if you're still thinking, well, healing is not for today, God's will is not for me to be healed, that type of thinking will stop the power of God from flowing in your life. So many people are saying, okay, a, a, a man of God, why am I not healed? Do you believe in healing? Do you really believe that God wants you well? Because if you don't believe that, God can't get you well. Your faith cannot operate until you know the will of God for your life. You have to know it's God's will for you to be healed. And so the hindrance comes in is when people don't know it's the will of God for them to be healed. I've seen many people that God could heal them instantaneously, that their faith can get them healed, but they have been taught, you know what, God, don't want, God doesn't want us healed. Some people he do and some people he don't. And matter of fact, I'm probably the one that he doesn't want to be healed. See, religion has taught us that. Tradition has taught us that. But the Word of God doesn't say that. The Word of God says he took your sickness. He took your disease. He took that, he put that on the cross. Isaiah 53, 4 and 5 said that. So if Jesus took my sickness, he took my disease, he took my weaknesses, he took my pain, then why wouldn't he want me to be healed? So you have to be careful. You have to study the Word of God. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 2, 15, he says, study to show thyself, approve unto God. A workman 
who needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So in other words, the Bible says, study to show thyself. So as I study the scripture, I see that God, Jesus is a healer. The Bible says, even in the Old Testament, God is referred to as Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals thee. The Lord that heals thee. So, if he is the Lord that heals thee, why wouldn't he want you healed? Why? Secular humanistic teaching was saying, no, God is so busy in heaven. And you know what? He just doesn't have time to see about you. That's tradition. That's religion. Let me tell you something. If you are a mother, a father, a foster parent, and you have adopted kids or you have biological kids, don't you want to take care of your kids? Don't you want to make sure your kids are healthy, wealthy, and, and succeed in life? And the Bible says in Matthew 7, says this, If ye being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give good gifts to those who ask Him? So in other words, if you and I, in comparison to God, the Bible says you've been evil, not that we're physically evil, but in comparison to good, God is supreme good. But in comparison that if you've been evil, if you in your state or condition without God want to take care of your kids, how much more will God who sits in heaven wants to heal you? You don't like to see your kids suffer. I don't want to see my children suffer. So why would God want you to suffer? See, religion has told us that. Religion has told us God wants you to suffer because he's trying to teach you something. Religion has told us, well, some people God's going to heal and some people God's not going to heal. That's religion. Religion has taught us. But I want to let you know today, God never meant to send Jesus to down the cross for you and I and for our bodies not to be healed. He wants you healed. Don't allow erroneous teaching information that does not even line up with the Bible to come in there to try to convince you that God, won't, that, that God doesn't want you well. We talked about 1 Peter 2.24 uh, of the Bible says, uh, uh, he bore our sins in his body on the cross, and by his stripes we were, W-E-R-E, we were healed. So the Bible says, not only did he bear our sins, but guess what? He bore our sicknesses on the cross. My thing is this, if Jesus didn't want me healed, why did he bear my sickness? You see what I'm saying? See, the world wants us to believe lies. Second Corinthians 4, chapter, verse 4 says, whom the God of this world, small g, whom the God of this world has blinded the eyes of them that does not believe, least the gospel of Jesus Christ will come and shine upon them. See, Satan is trying to blind us. What do you mean blind us? Keep us ignorant of what the Word says. We see, when someone is blinded, they can't see or they can't understand. But once you understand, you can do better. He tries to blind us and say, you know what? God doesn't want you healed. He just wants you to die with sickness and disease. Because you know what? We got, we got to die with something. See how many people has purchased that lie, has bought that lie, took it to the bank, and reaping all the results that they did in their body? When the Bible never said it at all? I mean, think about this for a moment. St. John 10, verse 10 said it like this. Jesus came not but to, uh, uh, Satan came not but to steal, kill, and destroy. That's St. John 10 and 10. Satan came not but to steal, kill, and destroy. But the Bible says Jesus came that they may have life. And then he just didn't talk about just having life. And then he said, and have it more abundantly. So in other words, Jesus came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So if Jesus came that we may have life, the word life, the first part of our life is eternal life. Jesus came that you and I may have eternal life. Okay? But not also, not not just eternal life, but to have it more abundantly. So yes, Our name is written in the Lamb's book of life if we are saved, if we are born again, if Jesus Christ is the Lord of our life. But the Bible says not only would he give you eternal life, but he wants to give you life more abundantly. Well, where's that at? Here on the earth. 
God wants you to have the abundant life here in the earth. Well, guess what? You can have abundant life if you're sick. If your body is physically sick, it's going to be impossible to have the abundance of life that Jesus wants you to have. So we cannot believe a lot from the world that says, well, God wants you sick. Well, we might as well just take St. John 10 and 10, tear it out the Bible and throw it away. Well, how many people know we can't do that because that's in the Word and, and, and the Bible is true? He says in St. John 10 and 10 that the thief, which is who? Satan. The Bible calls him a thief. He comes to what? Steal. He comes to what? Kill. And he comes to what? Destroy. So I will say to this, because I've been physically sick before. Sickness doesn't feel good. It didn't come to make me feel better. It didn't come to give me life. Matter of fact, sickness made me feel worse. It tried to stop things from operating correctly. So the Bible said Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Sickness kills, folks. Sickness uh, prevents things. If, if you've been into the hospitals and places that I've been and seen people sick, I, you, I refuse to say that God put that on somebody. You mean to tell me God is a child abuser? You mean to tell me that's called life? That's not life, child of God. Woman of God, man of God, hear me. It's, that's not life. Jesus came to provide life and to provide it more abundantly. Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So sickness, disease, didn't come from God. It came from Satan. So the first lie that Satan says and the hindrance of people walking in that divine healing is, okay, God doesn't want us to be well. He, puts, he, he doesn't want us to be well. God didn't come to heal our bodies. That's not the truth. But religion has told us that. Uh, uh, people who don't know the word has told us that. Matter of fact, about, and I'm giving you scriptures uh, today on this broadcast. 1 John 3, 8 said, for this reason, the Son of God was manifested that he may destroy the works of the devil. Or he may undo what Satan was trying to do. So think about it. Sickness, disease, lack, poverty came from Satan. But guess what? The Bible says Jesus has come to undo what Satan has already done. To undo. That's first John 3. He's come to undo that. Undo what? Undo the sickness in your body. Undo the pain in your body. Jesus came to undo it. Don't believe a lie of the devil no more. Don't be the lie of public opinion no more that God doesn't want you well. And so, therefore, it's hard to receive healing if you think, well, God doesn't want me well. But have you noticed the people who say that, that God doesn't want them well, God wants them to be sick, but yet they go to the doctor? How hypocritical is that? Okay, you say God doesn't want us well, but you go to the doctor to get, to get healed. Wouldn't that be hypocritical? You see how the enemy throws lies into all of this? The Bible says he's the father of all lies. I don't believe him. Uh, he, he, he's a liar. I mean, come on. If, if someone go ahead and tell you that they're a liar, which the Bible said he is, then I'm not going to believe anything that comes out of his mouth. It is not the will of God for you to be uh, sick. It's the will of God for you to be healed. And sickness and disease came from Satan himself, didn't come from God. So God wants you well. The Bible says in Exodus, Exodus, it says, I am the Lord thy God that heals thee. Exodus says that. I am the Lord thy God that heals thee. God has said, I am the healer. I am the one that heals thee. All divine healing comes from God. You might be sitting in your home. You might be watching this broadcast uh, 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 at work, in your business, whatever the case may be. You might be later, late up at night watching the broadcast, wherever you are. You might be in one of the third world countries somewhere, and you're watching this broadcast uh, or hearing this broadcast uh, 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 on radio. Let me tell you something. God got you watching. God got you listening. Why? Because he wants you well. We cannot afford for any more sickness and disease to take good people up out of this world. Your sons, your daughters, your brothers, your sisters, your mom, your daddy, your uncles, don't they deserve to stay here, to live a long life, to live a healthy life? See, the Bible says here, 
He said, with long life will I satisfy you and show you my salvation. That's Psalms 91. That's part of that covenant uh, 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 that says in Psalms 91 verse 1 said, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide on the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God, and Him what I trust. He said, A thousand shall fall at my right hand and ten thousand at my left hand. He said, But none of these calamities are going to come near my dwelling place. He said, because he's given his angels charge over me to protect me in all my ways. At least I dash my foot against a stone. He said, I'll not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the evil plots that fly by day, nor of the sudden destruction that lie ways at noonday. Then I'll drop down a little bit down to verse 14, 15, and 16. Then he said, with long life, and then he says, uh, 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 with long life, would I satisfy him? The Bible promised long life and also promised that you'll be satisfied. So with long life, would I satisfy you and show you my salvation? So if God wants to satisfy us, to give us long life, then guess what? Sickness and disease is an enemy to stop us from being satisfied. So dear heart, don't believe the lies of the devil. Get away from people that, that preach negative that God wants you sick. It is not the will of God. I'm giving you scriptures today on this broadcast so you can realize that that's one of the hindrances of getting healed. Because think of it, if I don't believe in divine healing, how can I walk in divine healing? What is insanity? Doing the same thing over and over and over, expecting a different result. Well, listen here, I got to get a new result in my life for 2016. God wants you about as well 2016. He wants you to live in a, a long, happy, satisfied life. But let me tell you something. You're going to have to obey the Word now. There's a lot of teaching out there that goes against the Scripture concerning divine healing. But that's one of the hindrances. God wants me to, to be sick. No. And then we got religion telling us, well, you know, God needs a little rose in his rose garden. And all of a sudden, he just go ahead and pick one of those rose God, rose out the rose God, and put it up in heaven. Well, you know that's not the truth. Come on. If those of you that don't know the Bible, the Bible never said God had a rose God. Where do we get that from? We got that from religion, and we got that from tradition, as though God's got a rose garden in heaven. So therefore, you got some mom, some daddy, son and daughters leaving this earth, and all of a sudden we sit there and tell them, God just needed their five years, so he gave he took the rose out of the rose garden. Come on. Come on, men and women of God. We got to believe this. We got to look at this. Come on, people of God. We got to see this. Doesn't make sense. Not even scripturally. And I just got to tell the truth. Why? Because God wants you well. God wants your baby well. If your baby's sick right there, God won't, God's not trying to take your baby out of here. God's not trying to take your son and your daughter out of here. There's a power of God that wants them well, that wants them healed, that wants them delivered. There is a healing power of God. Come on, mama. You can believe God today. Come on, daddy. You can believe God. Come on, grandmother. Don't stop praying. You can believe God for divine healing for yourself, for your relatives, for those who you come in contact. There is an anointing. That will remove burdens and destroy yokes if you will allow it. It is the will of God for you to be healed. And so we see here, that's one of the hindrances. I keep talking, that's the first hindrance, that it does not exist. Matter of fact, Jesus said it like this. He said, I am the great physician. Then he looked at the Pharisees and said, you're going to say, physician, heal thyself. Why? Because they didn't believe in healing. But let me tell you something. Healing is of today. Now, I know there are different types of healing. There, I, I believe there is what I call secular healing, where you're taking medicine. Thank God for that. But I'm talking about divine healing because my faith is you don't have to keep taking the medicine for the rest of your life. Those of you that take medicine, you understand there's so many side effects. And some of you are very liberal about doing that because of the side effects. There's another system that does not have side effects. It's called divine healing. That comes straight from God himself. A loving God doesn't want you sick. A loving God wants you healthy today. A loving God wants your mind and your body regulated by the power of the Holy Ghost. A loving God. That's who we're serving. Maybe you're watching this broadcast, and this is your first time hearing about this God. I call him Jehovah. His name is Jesus Christ. He's a loving God. 
He is a loving God. Well, why do loving God put sickness and disease on someone? He doesn't do that. He's a loving God. He's a loving God that wants to heal. He's a loving God that wants your bodies healed. But he wants you to believe his word, to take him face, face granted for what his word says. That's why he said he was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes you're healed. That's why loving Jesus died on the cross for you, so you don't have to suffer. Do you realize it's not the will of God for you to suffer? I've been sick before, and, and, and sickness can cause you to suffer. It's not God's will. And I hear people say, well, you know, he suffered, you know, and he didn't suffer. Let me tell you something. God doesn't want you to suffer at all. The Bible talks about he wants you healed. Glory to God. I'm getting excited about that. God wants you healed. And you can be healed according to the power of Almighty God. There's a loving Jesus. He died on the cross for you. Don't believe the lies that the world said. Don't let religion take you up out of here before your time. Don't let tradition take you out here before your time. There is a loving Jesus that loves you very much. And if you do the word of God and get on the word of God, why do you keep talking about healing? Because Romans said it like this. Romans 10 verse 17, that is. It says, faith comes by hearing, and hearing comes by the word of God. The more I hear the word of God, the more my faith is stimulated to walk in divine healing for my life. See, your faith has been stirred up today because at the end of this broadcast, we're going to pray for you because I believe there's a healing Jesus. Oh, my God, there's a healing Jesus that's ready to heal your body, to heal your mind. And so that's what I wanted to talk about on this broadcast. We got several other hindrances that, that Satan used to try to hinder people from getting healed, but I just wanted to take this broadcast just to talk about the first one. God wants you well. The hindrance is, Satan said, oh, no, God doesn't want you well. It's not for the day. What do you mean it's not for the day? You hear people say, well, it, 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 well, Jesus healed back during the Bible, but right now it passed away with the apostles. The Bible didn't say that. Okay, let me give you a scripture. Malachi 3, 6 says, I am the Lord thy God, and I change not. So if Malachi 3, 6 says, I am the Lord thy God, and I change not, so if he doesn't change, well, if he healed back then, he's healing today. If he doesn't change, okay? Many of you say, well, that's, that's Old Testament. But Malachi 3, 6 said, I am the Lord thy God. I change not. I, I don't change. I don't change. I don't change. So God doesn't change. No, he doesn't change. Okay? Some of you say, well, well, that was Old Testament scripture. Well, let's go to Hebrews 13, verse 8, I believe. Hebrews 13, verse 8 says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday today, and forevermore. Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Now, when I look at Hebrews 13, chapter verse 8, if he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, then based upon that scripture, if he did it back then, he's doing it right now. If Jesus healed people during his time, why, why, then he has to heal them today. If not, take Hebrews 13, 8 out the Bible. That's New Testament. Take it right out the Bible. But the Bible said he's the same yesterday. Okay, that's past. Today, that's present. And forevermore, that's future. So Jesus is, is, is the God that heals from the past, the present, and the future. But what does society say? They say, oh, till it's not for today. Hebrews 13, 8 said it. You see how the truth of the Word of God calls us to walk in a greater light or a light or a life that God has for you? Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Think about that today. He wants you healed. We bind up the lies of the devil. The truth of God's Word is coming to set you free. So right now in this program, let's pray for you because your faith is stirred up. We know that that was a lie from Satan that said that God didn't want you healed. That first hindrance is about to be demolished right now. Matter of fact, it's being abolished right now. Why? Because we got the truth of God's Word on the scene. So what I need for you to do, I need you to put your hand on a part of your body that's not functioning right. If you're at home, in the privacy of your home, go ahead and put your hand on a part of that body 
that's not functioning right. Amen. Wherever you are, if those of you that are watching us cross seas and, and, you're, uh, and you're listening to that, go ahead and put your hand right now. God wants to see about that. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for those that are watching us by broadcast. I pray for those that are listening to us by radio right now. I pray right now for the power of God to go into their bodies. I curse sickness. I curse the disease. I command it to dry up, wither up, and be no more in the name of Jesus. I command every organ, every tissue, every blood cell to function properly. I curse cancer. I command it to dry up, wither up, and be no more. I curse tumor. I curse every sickness, every disease that's trying to attack the body of the person. I curse it. I command it to dry up. I command it to wither up. It is the will of God for them to be healed. I loose the anointing of God, the healing power of God, the virtual power of God to go in their bodies in the name of Jesus. And I command things to line up. I command organs that did not work to start working in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you right now for the power of God being manifested in their bodies. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Well, glory to God. Well, what I need for you to do, man, go ahead and start checking the part of your body right now that's not, that's not working. Glory to God. And, and, and believe God is going to start working right now. Some of you, when you go back to the doctor, say, hey, doctor, listen, can you go ahead and check that again? And they said, I already checked it right now. It wasn't working. Now check it again. Why? Because I had some prayer. I had somebody to pray for me. Glory to God. See, that ex expectation, that is expectation. Believe in God that the power of God is working in your bodies. Glory to God. I'm telling you, it's working. I believe it. God doesn't lie. You say, well, I don't feel anything. Has nothing to do with your feelings. It's by faith. By faith we believe the Word of God is really working in our body. At this particular time, if you got a testimony, our announcer right now is going to put up information how you can email us. Because guess what? I want you to better email us at clintonpottersministries at gmail.com. I want to hear your testimony. Go ahead and write that. We're going to leave it up for, just for a moment. I need you to write that down. clintonpottersministries at gmail.com. You see that? Email us. Let us know about the testimony. Let us know what God is doing for your life. Let us know that, hey, you know what? I sense the power of God. Even if you got a testimony, let us know. You know what? God did that for us. I'm telling you, God is doing some powerful things in the lives of the people of God. I'm telling you, I, I'm just excited. This is our year. I, I'm telling you, 2016, I am claiming it, walking in divine healing. I'm telling you, I've lived, I'm living the best I've ever lived. What are you talking about? My body. I'm telling you, it's lining up with the word of God. Glory to God. And I am evicting sickness, disease. I am evicting every erroneous teachings out of my soul, out of my mind, so I can walk in divine healing like never before. Glory to God. Well, our time is all, all almost up, but I want to do this just before I go. We have what we have today. We call Clinton Potter's uh, Ministry Partners, CPM Partners. Uh, I want to talk to you just for a moment about that. CPM Partners are for individuals that say, you know what? Apostle Potters, I want to support you in bringing the healing power of God to the nations of this world. I, I, I want to support you in, in, in bringing uh, 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 this gospel. It's vision partners, CPM partners. I want you to pray about it today. It's for those of you out there that say, you know what? I know people that are sick. I want them healed. Help me get the healing power of gospel out there. Help me to bring it to, to, to the nations of the world. Help me to bring it to people. You know, my heart is to do it. Maybe you can't go to the mission field with me, but guess what? You can send us. Pray about it today, about being a CPM partner. I'm telling you, it'll bless you. There's not a gift too big, nor a gift too small, whatever God leaves on your heart. Well, what should we do? Pray about it. God will lead you whatever amount you should sow every month. I'm telling you, when you become a CPM partner, Membership does have its privileges. There's discounts that's going to happen. And if you want to know more information about it, please go to our website right now. Our announcer will put that information just back on the screen. That's www.clintonpotters.org. 
That's www.clintonpotters.org. Go ahead and write that down. It tells you all about becoming a partner. You can go online. You can register right there. We'll have staff that's going to help you to take care of well, what you need to do. But remember, Jesus wants your wealth. God bless you. Look forward to teaching you next week.